Good morning, everyone. This is Dan Moore, the Couch Coach, coming to you live from the ATL. Hope all of you are doing spectacular today. So I'm going to continue the way too early, the ridiculously too early predictions for the 2019 college football season. And before I do that, make sure you like and subscribe to uh, the Volunteer Roadshow Sports. Uh, my buddy Catfish would greatly appreciate it, and we will go from there. So the team I will be talking about today is none other than your defending national champions, the Clemson Tigers, one of the few ACC teams that uh, a lot of you care about. Uh, we have a good Clemson contingency on the Volunteer Roadshow uh, every week, and so I figure I would do an outsider perspective of what I think, that, or how I think, rather, that the Clemson Tigers will do for 2019. Well, first off, I, I think Clemson is a tremendous program. If the Alabama Crimson Tide or the New York Yankees are, are the equivalent of the New York Yankees, then the Clemson Tigers are the Brooklyn Dodgers or the St. Louis uh, Cardinals, you know, groups like that. I mean, I, I think Clemson is, you know, an elite, elite football program. Uh, you can make a case for them being number one or number two the last four years for sure. They just do everything right in that program, I feel. You know, like they have good players, they have good player uh, development, and they have great facilities. Um, everyone just does their responsibility there. You don't see a lot of dumb things coming out of Clemson. Um, I mean, Dabo is the head coach. I don't think Dabo is an X's and O's guru, right? But Dabo is a tremendous recruiter, and Dabo is a master talent evaluator, whether we're talking about his players or we're talking about his coaches. Uh, I think I think Clemson's coaching staff is probably the best coaching staff in college football. Uh, between Venables, between Elliott, between Scott, I think that nucleus of coaches is the best in the country. Uh, I mean, you could plug them in in the SEC as well, and they would have tremendous success. Dabo just lets those guys do their job, um, and again, everyone just fills a role, and they just do what they're supposed to do. It's not a lot of wasted motion. Uh, you don't see a lot of times where you know Clemson is putting the wrong player on the field or they do a bunch of dumb things to beat themselves they are just a well-run machine top to bottom now I know a lot of people especially in the SEC will knock them because of their schedule but Clemson is an elite program regardless of what uh, conference they're in I mean they would be successful in the SEC now would they be going 15 and 0 like they did last year if they were in the SEC I don't think so I think they would have eaten a loss uh, last year, if they played in SEC play, and you know, I know a lot of Clemson fans will come back and say, "Well, listen, if we beat the creme de la creme of Alabama, 44 to 16, we would mollywop anyone else in the SEC too." And I, I understand what they're saying on that, but I just I don't uh, completely agree. I think that different teams match up in different ways, and I'm sorry if an, if a Clemson played an LSU and a Georgia and an Alabama all in one year, they're eating a loss somewhere on that schedule. They just are. Uh, but, again, I don't think a loss is necessarily a bad thing. I mean, look at it this way. The 1985 Bears in the NFL are considered one of the greatest teams in NFL history, right? They lost to Miami, okay? And to a man, every single one of those players on that team said that Miami loss was the best thing that ever happened to us. And I believe that in college football. And, in, you know, even some of Clemson's great teams, like in 2000, well, 2015, they went undefeated, but they lost to the national championship. But 2016, they lost to, what was it, like Pittsburgh or some random team like that. And I think that was a good loss for Clemson. They needed that loss uh, to remind them of that they had to work. You know, sometimes great teams have to be reminded. Sometimes they lose sight of the fact that they have to put in the work. And I think that's true for Alabama, Clemson, the Georgias, all of these teams. So while they went 15-0, and I don't consider a 15-0 and necessarily more impressive than a 14-1. and Now, that said, I've had conversations with Clemson fans about last year and, and, and asked them, like, is this the, one of the best teams in college football history? I mean, one of the few, well, A, because you went 15-0, and B, because of how you went 15-0. and um, and, and I think you can make a case for that. Now, Clemson next year, I mean, I, I expect Clemson to have a tremendous football team. I mean, as long as you have Trevor Lawrence there, they're going to be a dynamic offense. Uh, they, they're going to be multifaceted. Um, they're going to have talented players on that side of the ball. And the thing about Clemson, too, is they don't get too hung up on the recruiting rankings like an Alabama or a Georgia does. They look at it from the perspective of who's going to help us win and who fits the best for what we do. So they have an identity, they know what they want to do, and they're willing to make the changes when they need to make the changes. And one of the things I was most impressed with about Clemson last year 
was they were willing to pull the trigger on Trevor Lawrence at the expense of an established starter like a Kelly Bryant. Now, that could have went bad for Clemson. And in that Syracuse game, it almost went bad for Clemson. I remember watching that game. Uh, at I was at the Georgia-Tennessee game this year, and I was watching that from the tailgate. And I got to tell you that the... I think the light life flashed before a lot of Clemson fans' eyes when Trevor Lawrence got dinged up in that game. So sometimes it takes a little bit of luck, too. I mean, if Trevor Lawrence got hurt in that game and he was out for the season, that would have been devastating for Clemson. So, you know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, right? But that was a situation that could have panned out very poorly for Clemson. And But at the same time, they made the right decision. Look, you know, the team around them being equal – what are we going to do? Are we going to go with the game manager? Are we going to go with the guy that's tried and true? Are we going to play this conservative? Or are we going to go with the guy that has the best upside that gives us the chance to win right now? And that was Trevor Lawrence. And, and, and you know what? Even though Dabo got a lot of flack on that, I, I think that the way he treated Kelly Bryant in that situation was the right way too. Uh, I think that you know even Kelly, you know, Kelly Bryant will disagree – Allowing Kelly Bryant to leave after that four-game stretch. It's like, listen, we're going to go in this direction with the kid. Um, we're going to give you the option to transfer. That's a lot better than trying to string him along and have him try to play and then you know cost him a year of eligibility. So I think Dabo did right by Kelly, even though Kelly might not feel that way. I think years from now, Kelly will come back and be like, he handled that the right way. So, again, I, I just think... Clemson's going to have a tremendous team. I, I look at their schedule, especially that ACC schedule. I just don't see anyone beating them, really. I mean, I see an 11-1, 12-0 season. There are a few blimps on the radar that could get them. Uh, I'm looking at the early part of their schedule. I think that there's you know Texas A&M. I think that there's um, you know uh, Syracuse at Syracuse, which could be interesting. But you know, Clemson gets. Texas A&M early in the year at their place. I think Texas A&M's best shot at upsetting Clemson was last year, and even that was kind of a little hard to believe because that was year one of Jimbo. Now, listen, I'm bullish on Texas A&M, like I said. I think Texas A&M is going to have a good football team. I think they're going to get either a Georgia and Alabama or a Clemson, and they could totally get Clemson. And if you're going to get Clemson next year, the beginning of the year is not a bad time to try to do it. But I just think there's going to be a lot of focus on that game. It's going to be in Clemson. I just think that Clemson will probably still take care of business there, being at home. Um, I think it'll be a tough out, but I think Clemson gets that one. Now, Syracuse, that's a team that just matches up well with Clemson. I mean, even last year, um, even though Clemson had the better team, um, I that was a tough out. I mean, even when Trevor Lawrence got hurt in that game, he was not playing well in that game before he got hurt. So, you know, I, I think Clemson won that game on talent because – if you know Syracuse had a little bit better talent, I think they pull that one out. And I'm just telling you straight, Clemson, if you play like that against an Alabama or Georgia or an LSU from the SEC, you lose that football game, bottom line. And uh, I, I'm impressed with Babers. I, I think he is a good coach. I think he's you know, moving that program in the right direction. I mean, to go 10-3 and at a place like Syracuse is pretty impressive. So they got to watch out for that game in a carrier dome. But I think that the fact that – they lost there two years ago. I just don't think Clemson's going to – that's going to be lost on the Clemson coaching staff. I don't see them looking past that one. So I kind of feel that they'll win that one too. I mean, you could say an NC State later in the year could get Clemson, but I just – Clemson just has the hold of NC State. I, 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 like, again, Clemson just has the talent and the coaching to just, you know, not look past those kind of teams. Those are the kind of games on your schedule that people look at because it's such a, a weak baby SEC, ACC schedule. You know, most – most teams, most coaches, most fans are going to look at these games like, oh, we got to worry about this one, but we don't have to worry about it really. If Clemson's going to drop their pants, it's going to be to some team like that randomly comes out of a blue like a Pittsburgh or like Syracuse two years ago where it was like completely out of the blue. I just don't see them losing any of those games because because of the focus on all of those games. So I I just I think Clemson might drop one uh, just because I do I mean they are losing some talent on defense but it wouldn't shock me to see Clemson go twelve and zero again it wouldn't shock I mean definitely wouldn't shock me to see them win the ACC they they're the clear favorites there I mean they could pretty much punch their ticket to go to the college football playoff as far as I'm concerned now obviously if they have injuries or anything crazy like that you you know disregard what I say but that's true for a lot of these teams I mean if your team gets hit by the injury bug 
then, you know, you have to reevaluate, of course. But I think Clemson will be back in that mix again. They have the structures there in place. They have the coaching. They have the talent. Um, do I see them repeating as national champions? That's going to be hard with what they lost. Now, they could do it. Um, I'm not going to put it past them. If you have five or six teams in the country that could repeat or could win a national championship, Clemson is one of those teams every year. But I just think of what they lost, especially on the defensive side, that's going to be hard to do. But, I mean, that's hard for anyone to repeat. So while I don't feel, I don't really feel that they're going to repeat, I do think they're going to be back in the mix. I think they're winning the ACC for sure. And I don't see anyone from the Coastal stopping them. So those are my earth-shattering predictions. I think Clemson goes 11-1, 12-0 in the regular season. I think they, get the, uh, they win the ACC for sure, and they get back in the college football playoff. Tell me how wrong I am. Tell me how delusional I am, and we'll go from there. In our next series, I'll be talking about the other South Carolina game, uh, team, the South Carolina Gamecocks. Hope you guys have a good one. Talk to you soon.